I've done 400 kilometers on my Alpha 1 Hardcore 165 now, riding in every kind of snow and terrain. So, here's a review of what I think of it so far. A couple of things before I get into it. Um, I'm not into telling people you've got to ride this brand or this other brand sucks or anything like that. I don't care what you ride. It all comes down to the rider anyway. But still, they're made to do different things. They all feel a bit different. I think most people find Cats and Polaris uh, kind of similar to ride and Skidoo's are more of a separate breed. I spent last winter on a summit and after getting used to it I liked it a lot even though it felt bizarre when I first rode it. And this year I'm on an Alpha and I know people who've gone the other direction from Alpha to something else. So I'm not going to tell you you should or shouldn't buy an Alpha one but I'll give you my overall impression of it, walk you through some things that you only realise about a sled when you spend a winter riding it and I'll tell you if it's got any deal breakers anything about it that would make me not want to buy one again. The whole review is probably going to end up a bit nerdy and detailed, which is not really my scene, because anyone who knows me will tell you I much prefer riding sleds to polishing or measuring them, but maybe this will help someone out there who wants to know what these alphas are all about. I think with reviews it's good to know who's paying for it and also what kind of rider they are so you can assess whether they're doing the same kinds of things on the sled that you'd be doing if you rode it. So FYI, I'm not sponsored, I'm just a punter. Uh, I'm 6 foot, 74 kilogram, 160 pound weakling, get on a sled about 30 days a year and ride elevations around 800 to 2000 meters here in Japan, so topping out about 6000 feet. You'll see from my videos I'm not a superhero rider. I can get around the mountains and sometimes pull off some pretty good lines. The main thing is I'm still improving every day and that's what makes it so damn addictive. This hardcore has got an SLP pipe but um, no real performance mods. I kind of like the look of it. Cat have really cleaned everything up over the last few, few years. It's tighter and leaner and slimmer. In the catalogue I was kind of bummed at the colour option available for Japan. It looked really boring. But when it arrived, it was better than I expected. Um, whatever, if you've got 600 bucks, you can wrap your sled any colour you want these days, so it doesn't really matter. The cat panels are good. Uh, they fit well, easy on and off, and they've got little flares that protect the fasteners from tree branches. Uh, this doesn't affect me, because I always slow down and ride carefully around any greenery, but it's good to know they care. Man, it still scratches up though, I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> I weighed the Hardcore today for the first time. Officially it's meant to be 264 kilograms uh, with a full tank of gas and all fluids and that's what mine is. And I know I dropped a few kilograms getting rid of the stock muffler but I've also fitted an electric start with a full size battery and that's with my bags, shovel, tools, spare belt, everything that I ride with. So it's okay for the real life weight of a 165. And as I'll show you later with this sled the weight you start with is the weight you ride with because you don't get no hitchhikers. So far so good with SeaTech 800, it's a good motor and it seems to excel at not blowing up which is always a nice feature. Uh, good low end torque, maybe a little down on the Duo 850 but top end feels maybe a bit stronger, I don't know. Uh, anyway, no complaints about the engine whatsoever. I've got a few mates who've had their SeaTech fouling plugs but I haven't had that. The fact that Yamaha has rebashed an Alpha SeaTech for their <coughs> new two-stroke, that's a pretty good sign that they're okay with what's under the hood. Anyway, I don't think there's many people who get on the sled and complain about the motor, unless they just got off a turbo. The clutch is excellent too, very direct, and when it spools up, the roller bearing almost sounds like a turbo. So all you have to do is make a whooshing noise in your helmet, and you've got yourself a turbo alpha. Cats come stock with proper suspension. I don't know why Cats the only brand that can do this, but it saves you thousands of bucks because you don't have to go aftermarket. So after battling the horrible shocks on my summit, I was kind of wary of the um, coilovers on the hardcore, but they seem really good. I've got them set up quite a bit softer than I used to ride, but the damping is perfect and you just throw it at anything and the shocks seem to read your mind.
I'll talk about the monorail more in a bit, but it really is true that they, they don't trap snow. And if you run sloppy concrete like we get around here quite a bit, uh, it makes a big difference to how the, the sled feels. Two weeks ago, my twin rail buddies were trying to hack snow out all day, but with, uh, with the alpha, you just never need to think about it. Pluses and minuses. Stick that in the plus column. Yeah, but stick the running boards in the minus column. They're strong, and the extra grip bar they run along the outside for the hardcore gives better grip. But they're totally shit at clearing snow. Uh, the snow that's not building up in the skid builds up on these dumb running boards instead. Kind of weird that a dedicated mounted sled has got trail running boards. So I assume they just can't afford to retool it, or don't care, or are waiting until they redo the whole chassis. When I first reviewed the Alpha last season, I said the foot boxes were small, and, and they are. My size 9 boot has like millimetres of wiggle room on the left, but it's not really the tight fit that's the problem, it's not being able to clear the snow out. You don't spend much time with your feet hooked in there, but when you do need them, they will be full of snow, and the more you try and clear it, the worse it gets because of hot air venting from the engine, which creates perfect ice when you stomp on it. Luckily, there is an easy fix for the running boards, just hack out all this metal. Um, you can double the size of the foothold and then you can actually clear snow out of the bottom instead of just jamming it in tighter. Job done. Okay, a couple more minor points before riding this thing. First, can we all just agree that Do's link bag system is the best and get rid of everything else? I mean, you have to empty half this cat bag before you can remove it and it's fiddly as fuck. The stock seat was a bit short for me, so I got the aftermarket mountain seat. And because I fitted an electric start, I put the battery in the engine bay, which keeps the weight forward and out of the way of the seat. And yeah, I know E-Star is heavy, but after using Skidoo's um, shot system for a season, I'm never going back to pull starting. I don't care. I don't care how heavy it is. Actually, let's just make shot universal, like the link bags. I do like the aftermarket seat, but one small thing about it is there are, there are hard points on the side that can push against your leg. And if you look at Polaris and Do seats, nothing interrupts the, the line of your inside leg. Anyway, to me, again, it's the Do seat that's so simple and just right. Furthermore, the Skidoo bottom holder may be conveniently removed for splendid formal dining. This here is Doug, my quick draw custom shovel bracket. Two seconds and Doug's digging deep. Hey, I know I'm jumping around a bit, and God, this is going to be a long video. This is an Arctic Cat, so of course, after 400 kilometers, it's already got slop on the steering. I know there are fixes for this, but I just wish Cat would build them better. What's wrong with their part? Is it made of butter? The instrument cluster, blah, blah. I don't, I don't care. I don't even know how to set the clock, so it's always lunchtime. The only thing I keep an eye on is the coolant temperature if I'm riding harder snow because the hardcore only has a single front heat exchanger. Like most mountain riders, I've taken the snow flap off and it's fine so long as you drop the scratches on the trail. Oh yeah, but speaking of the instrument cluster, someone told me that if you catch it on a tree, it'll come right out. Well, that sounds like bullshit, I thought. And then the very next day, I stopped at the top of a climb after rearranging some foliage. And the whole cluster had popped out and was dangling there like a zombie's eyeball. It clipped right back in, no problem, but I've since rigged up a, a deflector on each side. I like the skinny bars. I like having the switches on the bar instead of on the tank. Some people do, some don't, but this setup works well. You can adjust the heaters on the fly, literally in mid-turn. One thing that is not good is the reverse switch. After rollovers or in certain snow conditions, it gets grains of snow in there and you just cannot get it to engage reverse or start. So you need to blow it out or get a twig to scrape it out. And the other thing about the reverse is the beeper is strangely quiet. Like it's all shy about having been born with a beep. And the whole process is kind of indistinct. The catch reverse is like, really? You want me to change direction now? But I just did it last year. And by comparison, of course, the do is incredible. It just switches instantly like my dog on good behaviour before dinner. Anyway, that's enough about going backwards. How does the Alpha ride forwards? You know, I, I rode one a few times last winter and I loved it, but during summer I'd forgotten how damn responsive this thing is in powder. 
Um, this was my first ride this winter in a meter of power and zero base and I was basically out of control left and right over correcting and overriding until I remembered to chill out and dial everything back. So basically I really like the Alpha. The monorail skid feels different, it gives a kind of a softness to the back of the machine but you quickly get used to the extraordinary way it conforms to the snow in cut up, trenched out, um, uneven snow. It, it's incredible the way it smooths out the ride and finds grip. In super tight turns the track seeks out and moulds itself into the snow even at extreme sled angles. It, it really will do ridiculous things flowing over undulations and tracked out bumps like, like liquid. Particularly if you stay on the throttle and keep the track alive, it's fantastic the way it will levitate you out of the snow and propel you forward. There's just something I really enjoy about the way the Alpha's front end is so stable and the back end is so mobile. But having the pivot point almost in the middle of the track can make it feel really tippy. Um, tippy might not be the right word. It's more like um, I sometimes have days when I'm not feeling it on the sled, I'm kind of wimping out and not committing to the angle and edge of turns. And on those days the Alpha can be a bit weird because one ski can be off the snow but the track feels like it hasn't moved. And this is because, uh, I think, because instead of tipping directly up on the edge of the track like you do with a twin rail, the Alpha kind of oozes up on the edge, giving it a, a massive contiguous sweet spot of balance. I don't know if I'm making sense, but it's a bit like the difference between opening the hard cover of a book, which pivots 100% from the spine, and opening one of the pages. And once you realize what's going on, you can wallow in that balanced sweet spot, because it's super wide and super forgiving. You can get away with almost anything. But the Alpha is not the sled for rock hard snow when you need every bit of pressure you can get on the edge of the track, because it's not going to get as much grip, and it'll wash out. For me that's about 1% of what I ride, so it doesn't really worry me. But I think the main thing is, if you ride the Alpha 1 expecting it to behave exactly like a twin rail, well it won't. Last weekend I spent some time jumping back and forth directly between twin rail um, cat and a monorail, and I could definitely feel the way a twin rail gives you a harder edge because you're applying pressure to a, a smaller area right along the edge of the track, just physics. So look, the monorail is not a magic trick that instantly makes the twin rail redundant, but I think it's brilliant that Cat did something so radical and gave us a new way to play on the snow, like the snow bikes, the exo sled, or the enticer alpha hawk. They're all just different ways of having fun. If you're lucky, you get to ride them all. As for the durability of the alpha rail, I don't know. None have broken from the Cat dealer near me, and I haven't given it a moment's thought of my own riding. Smash it off the truck, through trees, riding two up. Is it as strong as a twin rail? Well, I doubt it, at least not in the same way. A twin rail might break in one situation and monorail in another if you hit something hard enough. Have some of them broken? Yep. Does it instantly fall apart if you look at it funny? No. You can never really tell how much of a problem something is anyway because the, um, the sponsored riders can't say anything and any private owner with an issue feels really pissed off, shouts at the whole world. Look, Polaris 850s don't all blow up, dudes don't all cook their belts, and alpha rails done will break. I've got to do 850, I ride an alpha, and for sure one day I'm going to buy a Polaris, just because they've got the best sponsored riders out there hammering out content every day to convince me that if I buy their sleds, those skills will magically transfer to my puny body. In fact, Polaris has got so many hyperactive sponsored riders, and they do such a good job flogging their sleds, that you forget the world's full of other brilliant riders on skidoos and cats and Yamahas. Uh, you've got to check out this Finnish guy, Cordelin. He does all the tricks on his Alpha. And Ride Finesse, another amazing Alpha rider who... He doesn't make many vids, but they're all poetry in motion. And um, don't miss this Canadian guy's 30-minute snowmobile movie. It's unbelievable. His, his mates ride everything, and the filming and editing is, is outstanding. In the Nordic countries, they seem to breed total monsters who toss their Yamaha four-strokes around like they're made of helium. So getting back to my Alpha 1 Hardcore. For a 165 I think it's pretty damn mobile. Um, I got a 165 because I figured as a weekend warrior with unheroic skills and a frail psychology, I needed the extra traction to give me the confidence to try harder lines and therefore get better. 
and I'm glad I spent two seasons on a longer sled, the Summit 165 and now the Alpha 165, but I've got to tell you, I tried an Alpha 154 the other day and it blew my mind. I actually kept looking behind me because I thought the entire back half of the sled must have broken off. The thing was so amazingly flickable and fast and just generally on fire. I never imagined it would be so different, but that's why it's so good to still be in the foothills of the Learning Curve Mountain. Every day I ride, I'm bagging new skills and realizing new things about how different sleds and setups react. That's what makes it so addictive. And this is the end of my rambling review of the Alpha 1 Hardcore 165. Do I like the sled? Yep. Has it got any faults? Yep. Any deal breakers? Nope. Would I buy it again? Yep. Should you buy one? I don't know, if you like the colour.